Hello everybody and welcome to the Across the Stages podcast, brought to you by Absolute Motorsport Radio and also available on Absolute Motorsport TV. I'm James Casey and today I'm going to be previewing Rally Finland as the WRC returns from its summer break. The long six week break in the WRC is finally over and we're ready for the action to get back underway in Rally Finland which starts tonight. There's been plenty of drama in the build up to this rally and that's what we're going to start off with and uh, really three main stories. Uh, Breen is uh, going to be competing with Hyundai at this event um, and this is a very interesting story. Of course Hyundai have already got four drivers on their roster but Danny Sordo and Sebastian Loeb not keen uh, on doing Rally Finland, not an event that really suits them uh, so therefore Hyundai decided to bring in uh, another new driver. Uh, I suppose they really had kind of three choices. Um, the most obvious one was Hayden Padden, who of course was with the team last year, did a pretty good job really, um, but was unlucky to be sacked and that was kind of a result of A, Andreas Mikkelsen's lawyers being very keen on keeping him at the team uh, and Hyundai honouring that contract with him and also Sebastian Loeb joining the team. So Padden was very unlucky uh, to lose that seat and it was kind of thought that this would be a good opportunity for him to get uh, back into the team at this event. But he was overlooked uh, for Craig Breen, which was the second option. Uh, and the third option, which I'll just quickly mention, I suppose, was their young their young driver, Yari Hooten, and they could have gone with. But that was very unlikely when there's people on the sidelines um, that they could go with, like Breen. Uh, and Breen has been very, very busy this year doing events in Ireland, his home country, doing very, very well in there, winning uh, a lot of that. Uh, he's done a couple of events in Italy as well, which he's uh, done reasonably well in. And of course, he won the Ypres rally recently as well. Uh, all of those rallies in R5 machinery, um, but that kind of competition, keeping himself fresh, uh, has meant that he was a, a good choice here for Finland. Uh, I think he'll just be asked to bring home a solid result uh, for the team as the other two drivers push on. But uh, you never know, I suppose, if Mikkelsen gets off to a slow start, they might say, Go for it, Craig. Uh, try and get us a good result. But I suppose for him, that aim is just finish the rally, good points in the top 10, and that might open up further opportunities for him in the season, uh, possibly Turkey and Wales Rally GB, other events that Sordo and Loeb uh, not too keen on uh, that he might be able to do. Uh, and it would be something that he's very much deserved. It was a real shame at the start of this season when there were no seats for Breen, Padden and Osberg. Those were the three. Uh, they were very unlucky, three really good drivers who really deserve a seat. So it's good to see at least one of them back this weekend in Breen. Hayden Pan was also supposed to be back this week. Um, having missed out on the Hyundai seat, he did a deal with M Sport uh, to be in the third M Sport car. Uh, and uh, he started his pre event test really fired up, wanting to go for it in this rally uh, and take home a big result and prove. Um, that he deserves his spot in the sport, which I don't really think he needs to prove. I think he's done that uh, enough last season, definitely. Uh, 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 and season's gone by. Of course, a, a rally winner is uh, Hayden Padden. But yeah, the test, unfortunately, then went wrong. Uh, he hit uh, a rock on a blind sixth gear corner, flipped the car off the road, uh, and it was damaged beyond repair. And because it was an extra car in a one-off appearance, that was the actual event car that they were using in the test. Uh, and it that was it, really. Uh, just that car's gone and there's nothing to replace it with. So Padden out of the event and doesn't get his opportunity that he richly deserved. But M Sport have said um, the mistake was not his fault. And there's lots of onboard footage available online. Um, could not see the rock at all. And um, yeah, very, very unfortunate. They're quite keen to work with him again. So look out. There could be an opportunity for him to do a rally further on in the season. Uh, of course, that will depend on all kinds of uh, different variables. But a real, real shame that we won't be seeing Padden uh, this rally. We also won't be seeing Elfin Evans. M Sport have had a tough time of it uh, in the build-up to this event. You know, we're supposed to have three drivers in Sundan, Evans and Padden. 
but they've lost Padden and they've lost Evans as well. He did the Rally Estonia WRC promotional event, which five WRC drivers went to um, in WRC machinery, uh, but had an awkward landing uh, on a big jump and uh, has hurt his back quite badly. Uh, and that's meant that he can't do Rally Finland. A really, really tough event physically. If it was another event, I think he might have been able to struggle through it. Uh, but doctors advice, they said, don't do Rally Finland. Focus on your recovery uh, and come back stronger uh, for Germany. Um, which he should be back for, but there hasn't been anything confirmed on that one yet. Um, Evans, uh, fourth in the championship, having a pretty good season. So a real big shame for him. But a, a good opportunity for Gus Greensmith, who's come in uh, and filled uh, that seat. Uh, his second appearance in a WRC car, did Rally Portugal as well. It was a reasonably encouraging event for him. Uh, and I'll be hoping to build on that basically uh, this weekend. So still uh, 10 manufacturer cars. Uh, unfortunately, we don't see that 11th. Uh, but Breen in at Hyundai and Greensmith in at M Sport to look out for. In our championship fight, things really hotted up uh, in Italy. They closed in even more. Uh, Oitanek, uh, of course, won the previous two events, uh, was second in the championship uh, going into it, took the championship lead, but didn't take the rally win uh, with a power steering problem on the final stage, uh, gifting Danny Sordo his second uh, rally win, which uh, was fantastic to see. I was so, so happy for Sordo uh, in that one, but a big shame for Tanak. Uh, good for the neutral though really because it's kept things really really tight. Had he won that event another 15 points plus power stage points as well. He would have picked up a few there. He would have had a big championship lead uh, but finished fifth in the end. Only four points advantage now on Sebastian Ogier uh, who's on 146 points uh, and Thierry Neuville on 143 points also there snapping at the heels. So this three-way championship fight yeah, it's going to be a cracking one. Auger's actually already had two mistakes so far this season, Sweden and Italy. Um, but other than that, he's done a really, really good season on the podium, picking up good power stage points at every event. So he's looking pretty good. Um, weirdly, he's the one who's made the mistakes, though, so far this season. Uh, Thierry Neuville has also been very uh, strong. That Hyundai car hasn't quite been there for him, but there are upgrades Uh Coming at this event, of course, after that big long break. Um, so we'll see what can happen there. His only mistake has been Chile. Uh, and, and I think that this is a really good opportunity for Neville. He's been in good positions the previous two years and lost out. He'll be desperate to take it this season. I think he's, from a driving point of view, I think he's had his strongest season so far this year. So he's uh, uh, a really good opportunity. And Oik Tanak uh, has been the quickest... Um, quickest package uh, with his Toyota but there have been frailties and um, those problems at the end of 2018 with the car uh, have carried over into this year and um, yeah there was uh, Argentina of course where they had the alternator problem uh, which took him out of victory contention uh, and the power steering problem in Italy which cost him the win so there, there's frailties in that Toyota which could hold him back on pace alone he has to be the championship favourite the fact that he's now Ahead in the championship, even though only by a few points, um, despite those problems, really shows that he is the man to beat. Or Toyota, I suppose. Toyota and him are the package to beat. But that package on the Toyota side, not on Tannock's side, he's a brilliant season in terms of the driving, is uh, no major mistakes. Um, it's just those frailties in the car that could could hold him back. And uh, there have been rumours, actually, about him possibly moving Tannock moving at the end of the season with his contract being over uh, away from Toyota because he's kind of getting frustrated at these problems. But if they can get rid of those, surely you would think that this is Tanak's championship. Um, he's coming into three events that he won in a row last season. He'll be looking to repeat that. And Finland is an event where that Toyota is super, super strong. Of course, they won in their debut season back at the hands of Esbeka Lappi. Uh, and last year, he won in dominant style. Uh, with Latvala also on the podium. So, yeah, you've you've really got to think that um, he's in a good position. But Ogier and Neville are so, so strong that any slip-up, uh, and they could they could take this easily. And um, that's the great thing at the moment. Three different manufacturers, three top, top drivers. Very hard to predict. But you'd say at the moment, 
advantage Tanak, but let's see. Uh, this event is going to be crucial to setting uh, the tone for the remainder of the season. Other drivers out there at this event looking to prove a point. Timo Sundan has come strong. Uh, disappointing start to the season, but has done really, really well uh, in the last few rallies. Change co-driver ahead of Sardinia. Took second place there. Uh, Yama Leighton, the, the new co-driver. Previously, uh, Mikko Hervenen's uh, uh, assistant, shall we say. And, um, yeah, I think that this could be a, an event for him. Of course, his home event. Let's look out. This could be Sunnan's opportunity for a win. Um, showed really good pace in Sweden. Uh, and this could be another one that he pushes on at. So watch out for him. Also, Chris Meek won, of course, in 2016 in the Citroen. His season started off pretty well, but has gone awry in the last three events. So he'll be looking to bounce back. And this is an event with the package he's got and the talents he's got at high speed at Finland. Uh, yeah. Could be one that he really puts in a big performance. And also Yari Mati Latvala. Uh, again, yet to be on the podium this season like Chris Mink. We've only seen Tanak from Toyota on the podium. That's crazy. Um, but his home event, one he's won before. Uh, so, yeah, he could be there. Esa Pekalapi, again, home event, won it in 2017. So, yeah, plenty of drivers out there as well in the rest of the pack who'll be looking for at least a podium, you'd say, for those lot. That, that's, that'll be the target. Uh, and you never know in this sport how uh, far they could go. Who would have thought Sordo could have won in Sardinia? Um, so, always open uh, for a surprise. But it uh, should be a competitive event. And uh, as I said, that championship um, is going to be crucial, I think, this event in setting the tone for the rest of this season. Uh, WRC2, uh, we got a bit of a, a clash of the new cars, really. Um, so, so far, um, uh, Skoda have introduced their new Fabia a couple of rounds ago. Uh, and now uh, the Ford Fiesta R5 Mark II is out as well. So uh, we'll see there in the pro category Callie Rovenpera and Eric Pataranin in the new Fabia against Eric Camelli in the new Fiesta. Uh, the Fiesta did do Rally Estonia, so it's had a little bit of uh, uh, time. And Camelli's had plenty of time in the car. He was the zero car, uh, kind of like a safety car, but goes throughout speed uh, at the Yapriz Rally and has done plenty of testing as well. So be interesting to see how those two new cars compare up against each other. And um, I guess we'll see... Um, Somewhat here in Finland, but Rovan Pera uh, being his home event and being on such great form and with the talent he's got, um, you've got to say that he's probably going to be able to give that Fabia a win uh, and might not necessarily see the best of the Fiesta just yet. Still kind of building on that. Normal WRC2 uh, outside of the pro cars. Uh, Pierre-Louis Lebey has won the last two events. Uh, and uh, he's now got a new Fabio himself, uh, one of the customers lucky enough to get uh, his hands on the latest machinery and well deserved after his great two uh, events. He's got uh, an opportunity to make it three out of three here and uh, really stamp his authority on that championship. He's currently second, uh, 18 points off Benito Guerra, uh, but Guerra is kind of, all of his points are scored in America's events where there really anyone else around um so in the european events lube and uh, people like that uh, uh catch up basically so uh lube so far has actually only done three events so he's got plenty uh, left that he can do uh, and score points in two of which he has won takamoto katsuta's also here again new car he's in the new fiesta uh he's shown some good pace so far this season uh, and he's making his WRC debut later on in the year. So things really going in the right direction for him, uh, which is really good to see. Uh, so look out for him as well. Nicola Gryzin's had a good season so far. He's here as well. Yari Hootenen's here. Uh, hasn't really put in a, a, a strong performance, uh, well, strong result, sorry, yet in WRC 2 this season. Uh, but we know that he's got really, really good pace. Uh, did well. Uh, in Rally Sweden before we dropped out, so watch out for him, another home driver. Uh, Henning Solberg's at this one, we like to mention him, good to see him uh, at this event. Of course, we'll be seeing two Solbergs, at least, possibly three, at Wales Rally GB, that'll be interesting. 
uh, and Johan Christoffersen uh, is another one. Came third in Rally Sweden, uh, the double uh, world rallycross champion, and uh, back here again in Finland for his second event of the season. Be interested to see how he fares in the VW um, Polo R5. And finally, Junior WRC, uh, the penultimate round of the season. Uh, plenty of different surfaces and stuff that they cover in the Junior Rally Championship. Uh, they started out uh, in Sweden, then they did Corsica, then they did Sardinia last time out uh, here at Finland, and then they're finishing off the season at Wales Rally GB. Jan Solans won 12 stages uh, and won the event in Italy, which propelled him to the top of the championship on 71 points. Uh, a great effort there from him to pick up, and you get a point for every uh, stage you win, so he took a massive point all from there. Uh, to jump into the championship lead. He's nine points ahead of Tom Christensen on 62. And the other man in the title fight is Dennis Radstrom on 56. Radstrom, the only one of those three yet to win an event. So watch out for the junior guys as well. Finland, uh, quite different to the events that they've done so far. So look out for maybe a surprise driver outside of those three coming into contention uh, for the win. But... Only time will tell what is going to happen this weekend. It sure is going to be uh, an interesting one for the championship as an individual event. And just seeing the rally cars back out on the stages again is reward enough for the fans. So we'll see come Sunday what has happened. And uh, we'll be uh, talking after the event uh, through all of the action that has occurred. Anyway, thank you very much for listening today. And uh, we will see you then.